Hey friends, Alan Lee here, your friendly neighborhood handyman, and we all know how it feels to have a happy and satisfied customer. That job well done, that glowing review, all of that is fantastic. But let's be honest, sometimes clients and customers throw us curveballs that just knock us out. Today we're diving deep down into the not so fun side of business. How do you handle a difficult handyman client? Don't worry, don't worry, I'm not here to scare you off. In this video, we're gonna equip you with strategies on dealing with the trickiest situations and how to keep those handyman customers satisfied. So grab your toolbox of patience, and let's hop into it. And a bonus tip, if you stay till the end, I got some awesome tips that will help you avoid attracting these bad clients in the first place. So first things first, let's talk about the types of tricky clients and what types of bad handyman clients there are out there. You got the micromanager. This handyman client wants to be involved in every aspect of the job. So a few tips on what you can do to address the micromanager is to anticipate their needs, communicate clearly, and set boundaries politely. The next type of handyman client that we wanna talk about is the client that always adjusts the scope of work. These are the type of people that constantly add projects mid project and really add a lot to your plate. So the thing that you can do to overcome this particular client is have a change order process readily available in the back of your head, in the back of your pocket so that you can deliver to them when they are ready to change the scope of work. Because if you don't have that change order process ready, they're gonna expect you to do that stuff for free. And that's not helpful for anyone. The next type of tricky client that we wanna talk about is the client that just answers the door and disappears. You might have encountered this person, they are super hard to get a hold of. They're super hard to find when you have a question to ask them when you're actually at their house doing the work. And some of the keys that they are this type of client before you actually do the work is they're just extremely hard to get on the phone. They are busy bodies and they have a lot going on in their life. So a few things that you can do to address this type of tricky handyman customer is to get clear communication expectations and get things in writing before you actually start the job. Nothing is worse than getting to the job, figuring out what needs to be done, and then you can't find the client for an hour or two and you just don't know what to do because you don't wanna go forward with the project without having a signed written work order, but you also simply can't find the client. The next type of tricky client is the negotiator. The negotiator always wants to negotiate your price. Now, a few things that you can do to combat this tricky client is to make sure that you negotiate the price upfront. You don't wanna to get to the job ready to start the work and have them start negotiating with you. You wanna have things written out, you wanna have things signed so that when you actually show up and do the work, Everyone knows exactly what something's gonna cost and there's no questions about it. All right, now that we got the types of tricky handyman clients laid out, let's go ahead and hop into our eight specific tips on how to deal with difficult handyman clients. Number one, you're gonna wanna listen actively. Let the person vent, let the person share what's going on in their life and how they feel about the specific job. In our last video, we talked about how to combat the typical pricing objective of your price is too high. If you missed that video, we're gonna go ahead and link that up here so you can check that out. Because in that video, we talked about listening actively and the importance of letting the person share their thoughts and their feelings. Because at the end of the day, they are giving you some amazing feedback that you really can't get from anyone else. This is your client, this is a handyman client that's actually delivering you information on how you can improve as a handyman business owner. So definitely something that you wanna pay attention to is what they are sharing. Not everything they share is going to be 100% accurate, and that's stuff that you may not necessarily need to apply to your business because they're just speaking out of a place of negativity. And they're just mad or angry, and what they're saying is not 100% truthful. But at the end of the day, listening actively will get you a long way in figuring out what exactly is going on with the client and whether or not they're going to be your ideal client or not. At the end of the day, that's really what we're trying to nail down. Is this client someone we actually want to work for? Is this client someone that we're actually gonna to wanna to do business with? And do we wanna do business with people like this person? Because this type of person is going to refer us to other people that are similar to this person that we're talking to. The second thing that you wanna do when you are dealing with difficult handyman clients is show empathy to that person. We've all heard the saying, treat others the way that you wanna be treated. And this is very important when we are talking about dealing with tricky, bad, or difficult handyman clients is show empathy. Treat them the way that you'd wanna be treated. So what you wanna do is you wanna let the customer know that you understand their frustration and you're ultimately on their side. And to show that you can and say things like, I'm sorry you are feeling this way, or I'm sorry this happened on this particular job, or I understand that you're upset. Let's talk a little bit more about it. These types of phrases show that you are human, that you empathize with that other person. 
that you are on their side and you wanna help them come to a logical agreement here. Tip number three, this one is probably controversial, but apologize, even if it's not your fault, apologize. Be the bigger person in this situation and apologize for the wrong that you've done in this situation. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you need to forget about the wrongs that they've done, but what I'm saying is that you need to focus on your own wrongs in the situation. If something has happened based on price or based on job complexity or whatever it is, chances are you most likely have a role to play in what went wrong. You need to look introspectively into yourself and find out what you could have done differently to make this situation better and you need to apologize for that. Own up and own your responsibility. And by doing this may call the other person to action and may cause them to actually become a bigger person and apologize for their wrong in the situation. But it most likely will not cause that. Most of the time you apologize, that other person's not going to apologize and you just need to walk away if it comes to that. And we'll hop into that here in a little bit. But by apologizing, keeping your own side of the street clean helps the client calm down. It helps bring the situation down and lower the volume of what's going on. So show responsibility for what you have done in the situation and what you could have done differently to make things better. Number four, set expectations politely. Now, if the client is being rude or angry or aggressive, you need to set some boundaries and say, I would love to have this conversation with you, but I refuse to have this conversation right now until things de-escalate. And when we get to a place where we can talk politely and respectfully to each other, I would be happy to re-engage in this conversation. Now this type of boundary helps to de-escalate the situation and ultimately gets the conversation back on track. The fifth tip that I would have for you is don't get caught in playing the blame game. Even if the customer is completely at fault, do not blame them. Again, be the bigger person, take the blame that you have played in this situation because most of the time you have one even if it's small, and focus on that. Do not blame the client, even if the client blames you. Focus on resolving the issue rather than assigning blame in the situation. This will ultimately keep the conversation positive and help it from getting bogged down by negativity. The sixth tip that I would have for you is make sure that you document everything clearly. This includes documenting things like emails or texts or phone calls, and especially estimates and invoices and work orders anything that you've ever sent over to the client, make sure that it is signed properly and that everyone understands that there has been clear communication throughout this record. So that at the end of the day, in case of disputes, you have everything documented and that you have done everything correct. The seventh tip that I would have for you is stay calm, cool, and collected. Don't get drawn into arguments. The client is going to try and draw you deeper into the arguments. Try and draw you into a place of negativity, draw you into a place of victim mentality, but you need to make the conscious decision to choose that champion mentality no matter what the client throws at you. So stick to the facts and focus on the solution. Tip number eight, do not be afraid to walk away. There's absolutely nothing wrong with walking away and ultimately firing a bad handyman client. If someone is being difficult, arguing constantly, angry, aggressive, disrespectful, dishonoring, there's nothing wrong with walking away and being the bigger person and just telling the client simply, I don't think this relationship is going to work out and I don't think that we should work together anymore. Now, I've had a few jobs in my career come to this where I've had to fire clients and what will happen, I'm gonna tell you from experience, is that people will not like it. Probably 100% of the time that I have had to fire a client, they have gotten angry with me. They have gotten upset that I was firing them and basically that I was the one ending the conversation. And at the end of the day, this is the ultimate boundary that you can set with the client. Because once you end that relationship, it's done. Even if the client is angry with you, even if they're mad at you, even if they leave you a bad review, it doesn't really matter. Because if you end that conversation and walk away, you have labeled that conversation and that relationship as toxic and you do not need that in your life. Getting that out of your life, even if it results in a bad review, is 100% worth it because you don't have to deal with that situation any longer. But also a caveat to this, if you're gonna fire a client because they are being rude, disrespectful, dishonoring, you better look at yourself introspectively and ask yourself, was I being disrespectful? Was I being dishonoring? Because if you were, you need to own up to that. Maybe not to the client, but you need to own up to that or that same situation is going to play itself out in your business time and time and time again because you ultimately are the problem. Let's hop into some bonus tips about how to not attract these bad or difficult handyman clients in the first place. Number one, you're gonna wanna build a brand that's centered around trust and well-being 
and professionalism. So by building this brand, word is going to spread that you are an honest and respectful guy out there, and you're most of the time not gonna be attracting these bad clients in the first place because the better brand that you have created for yourself out there, it's going to attract a certain type of people that respect that type of brand. Another thing that you can focus on is building your online resume. We talk about this a lot through reviews. Build your online resume through reviews, get testimonials, get referrals, because by and large, if you're working for your ideal client, they know or they hang around with other ideal clients that will be perfect for your business. So by doing a great job for the perfect type of client, they are going to be referring other people to your business that are also the perfect type of client for your business. If you do work for bad clients or people who are not your ideal client, they're going to refer people to you that are not your ideal client. So another thing that you wanna do is network with professionals. I, I know that one huge uh, problem that people have with the industry is that people can leave us reviews, but it's very hard to leave clients reviews. But by networking with other professionals in your area, you're gonna start learning who the good clients are and who the bad clients are. You might go have coffee with Joe the plumber every single week, and you're gonna tell Joe that, hey, I just got this new client. Have you ever heard of her? Betty Smith. Oh yeah, don't, don't mess with Betty Smith. I went around and around and around with her. These are the ways that we're actually gonna find reviews about clients and figure out if they are good or if they're not. And if you also partner with and network with other people, say Joe the plumber is the exact type of person that you are, honest, respectful, honorable, things that you love and things that you appreciate about your business, and he also has the same ethos for his business, most likely his clients are going to also be your ideal clients and they're not gonna end up being difficult clients. Probably one of the biggest things that we ever did to weed out a lot of our difficult clients is we put our price on our website. Now, we personally use Jason Call over at Handyman Marketing Pros for our website and all of our SEO. So if you're interested in a marketing guy, I would highly recommend you check him out over at handymanmarketingpros.com. I'll drop a link to him in the description. But long story short, he put our price on our website and it drastically decreased our calls, which on the onset looks like maybe it's a bad thing, but we had a lot of calls coming in. But what it did is it decreased a lot of our calls, but it increased our conversion rate. It increased the amount of people that were actually calling us and actually converting into an estimate and converting into a job and converting into money in the bank at the end of the day. So it lowers the overall amount of people that are actually calling your business, but the type of people that are calling your business are better than what the overall was anyways. So what I'm saying is putting your price on your website actually weeds out a lot of those difficult clients. Because at the end of the day, a lot of difficult clients are focused on price rather than value. And you want to attract people that are more worried about value and more worried about professionalism, respect, honesty, integrity, more worried about those things than price. So if they see your price on your website and they're not scared away, most likely they understand the value that you bring to this business. So what I want you to remember is that even the best handyman out there will encounter tricky clients at some point or another. Even though you've applied all of these eight proven tips, you are probably still going to encounter tricky clients throughout your career. It's almost unavoidable. But by keeping your cool, setting boundaries, and communicating effectively, you can turn a challenging situation into a positive learning experience and maintain that positive reputation. If you are interested in another video talking about exactly how to get more handyman clients, check out this video right here. It will definitely help you out in that category. Thank you all for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next video.